Hey everyone, Ashram Buffer here. Um, just wanted to uh, say thanks for tuning in and um, we'll get started with the webinar in just a couple of minutes. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, Ash from Buffer here, and I'm really excited to talk to you a little on Instagram marketing. Um, Instagram is probably one of my favorite social networks at the moment. Uh, I think the, the new features they've come out with recently have been amazing as well, and i um, really looking forward to diving into some of those today. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here, and um, would love to kick things off and get right into the presentation. And to start, um, yeah, I'd just like to kind of cover quickly what we'll talk about in this half an hour. Um, we will cover the newest Instagram features, so Stories and Zoom being the main two. Um, we'll talk about how to use them, give some examples of how brands have already started using them, and hopefully some really cool actionable takeaways that you can use in your content right away. Um, yeah, then, as I kind of mentioned, there'll be some real world examples. So, you know, we'll talk about how brands have been using Instagram stories, how they've been using Zoom, and a little on how we um, handle Instagram at Buffer. And we'll also share some tips on how we um, schedule and track our content, our Instagram content here at Buffer. And so, yeah, really excited to jump in. And let's start with some key Instagram stats. So since its launch in 2010, Instagram has grown um, phenomenally. Um, you know, since the the Facebook takeover as well, it's just gone from strength to strength. And the platform now boasts over 500 million users. And what's even more impressive, I think, is that 300 million of those people use Instagram daily. So it's a real engaging network. The majority of users come back and use it every single day and post over 95 million photos and videos every day. And I hope what we will share throughout the remainder of this presentation will um, help your photos and videos to really stand out um, amongst the crowd and um, boost your engagement and success on Instagram. So I also think it's important to talk a little about why businesses use Instagram. Um, so that's a real key thing for me is like it it goes beyond the numbers and it really kind of goes into what the behavior of these users um you know instagram is like to connect with brands and the research shows that so instagram is one of the most engaging networks out there um you know brands get regular engagement with around four percent of their total followers on instagram and that compares to you know, well under 1% for Facebook and Twitter. 70% um, of Instagram users report having looked up a brand on the platform. 
and 62% actively follow brands on Instagram. So there's real opportunity there for brands to stand out. And this one is kind of really key for me. Um, only 36% of marketers say they use Instagram and that compares to 93% who say they use Facebook. And to me, that kind of says there's a ton of opportunity in Instagram. Um, I think Facebook's becoming a little bit crammed full of marketing content and adverts, um, whereas Instagram is still quite quiet. There's still a lot of room to stand out. And I think there's a ton of potential in Instagram over the next couple of years um, as it kind of transitions more into probably a pay-to-play network. I know they're working a lot on their, their ads, but I think there's a ton of opportunity over probably this year and next year to really start making a huge impact on Instagram. So next, I'd like to kind of dive into probably Instagram's biggest update this year, um, which is Instagram Stories. And Stories allow you to post photos and videos that vanish after 24 hours. Um, it's much like Snapchat Stories, um, which was a key feature that helped Snapchat kind of explode and grow over the past couple of years. Um, so your content that you share in an Instagram Story can be viewed um, more than once, so people can kind of scroll back and forth through your story, um, but it will all disappear after 24 hours have elapsed and content shared to stories doesn't appear in your main Instagram feed. So it's a completely separate place to share a different type of content than you would in your normal Instagram feed. So why did Instagram do this? Um, this quote from Instagram co-founder Kevin Seistrom, I think sums it up. Um, really well. You know, when Instagram first came around in 2010, its defining feature was its ability to turn average looking smartphone photos into really beautiful professional feeling images. Um, it had some brilliant filters, some clever editing tools, and it made anyone feel like a professional photographer. And as such, I think the Instagram feed has become a place for only the best content. You know, there's a very high bar um, when it comes to posting to Instagram feeds. Many of us, um, brands included, will only share the top kind of 5% of content we create. You know, it'll be the most beautiful pictures from our holidays or from a brand perspective. It'll only be the polished stuff that we really feel proud of and want to share. And I think what Stories does is it enables to go behind the scenes and tell the story behind what goes on the main feed. So, you know, on the main Instagram feed, you may see one polished advert, one polished photo, one video, but in the story, you can see the 10, 15, 20 images and videos that led up to that being shot. And I think that's where you can get some kind of real great authentic engagement with users. And, you know, it's why Snapchat really stood out above other networks over the past year, because you didn't have to spend hours creating a post. You could just snap it, send it, and perfection wasn't expected. And I think Stories opened Instagram up to that type of content as well. So yeah, now I'd love to kind of jump into how to create Stories. Um, and you can see from this screenshot here that the little horizontal bar at the top of the screen is where your um, Instagram Stories housed you can um, click on tap on any icon there and the story will open up and you can watch um, kind of, yeah sorry watch the um, the story go by and kind of skip between photos and to start your own story you can tap the little plus icon in the top left corner of your screen and then once um, you've tapped that button it will open up the story camera and here you can take a photo or record a video just as you would normally on Instagram or any other app. And after you've recorded your video and taken a photo, there's a range of filters that you can use to add text and drawings on your photo and kind of really embellish them and make them seem really fun and friendly. Um, and then from there, you can add them to your story um, using the little tick button you can see in the right hand screen there. Um, stories also feature some really simple um, analytics so you can see who's viewed your story and how many people 
And if there's a certain post from your story that's really gaining a lot of traction, people are liking it, um, you can also choose one to post to your Instagram feed, which is, again, shown on the right-hand side here. Now, um, I would love to also kind of jump in and share some examples of how brands are already using stories. Um, so there's three examples that I'd like to kind of highlight. And one is Mercedes-Benz, um, another a Far Media, and then the third is Taco Bell. So I'll just jump out quickly, um, stop sharing my screen, and then share again when I've loaded the web page that has these um, stories on them. So yeah, here you should see um, an example of a Mercedes-Benz story, uh, which I will just hit play on now. Um, see if we can go full screen. And what this story shows is behind the scenes in one of their advert shoots. So instead of just showing the polished final advert that was shot, Mercedes have taken their followers behind the scenes and showed everything that goes into creating that one final shot. Um, so I think it's a really great way um, to create some more engaging content around the main piece of content. So um, you know, instead of just sharing one photo from that photo shoot, uh, Mercedes have created a whole ton of content there to, to share with their fans. Um, then the next one is a company called Afar Media. And what they've done is kind of create a little travel diary from a shoot they had in a little German town. And normally I think what we'd see here is kind of one or two photos from this adventure, whereas using stories, they've been able to share like five or six and really give their audience a feel for what they're doing and what they're experiencing in this town. So um, yeah, some really good stuff there again. And then I think Taco Bell's um, example here is super interesting. Um, they actually use stories to kind of explain what stories are. And um, you can see their team actually jumping into their very first Instagram story. And then a bit later on in the story, they actually ask their fans um, what they want to see and encourage some direct messages from them. So a really great way to encourage some one-to-one -one engagement and to really help get their fans on board with Instagram stories and give them a bit of a chance to air their, th air their thoughts and um, share what they would like to see from Taco Bell on Instagram stories. And yeah, I'd love to then um, go on to some ideas that you can use for your brand. And so I think in those examples we've just covered, we've seen some really great behind the scenes content. Um, and I think no matter what you are creating on Instagram, you can always share some really cool behind the scenes stuff, um, whether it's kind of creating a blog post and talking about how you got the idea, maybe sharing a draft or your writing process. Um, I think Taco Bell were a really great example of encouraging one-to-one -one interaction. And when you're in the stories, you can really easily scroll up to reply to the person who's created the story. And I think that's a really great way to encourage some interaction with the brand, kind of like the early days of Twitter and Facebook when customers would be really excited to get a response from their favorite brands. Um, I think stories really allows for that personal connection as well. Um, Next one is downloads, and Gary Vaynerchuk's done this really well in his stories. He regularly features some screensavers that you can screenshot, save onto your camera roll, and then use on your phone. And I think that's a really cool thing to do, just to kind of think about what you can do to give your, your audience something they can keep and share um, beyond the story. Then um, live and timely content. So. This could be really cool for any product launches you have or any big events within your company or, or real world events that you want to take part in. Um, you know, you could create live content around your office on a launch day, you know, interviews with team members. And I think that stuff's really great through um, stories because it wouldn't normally make it, or in most cases wouldn't make it onto the Instagram feed. And another is takeovers, which it's something that became popular on Snapchat where you would kind of swap 
accounts for the day with another brand. So for example, I think Buffer, we've done a few takeovers with um, other companies like Track Maven, where they'll take over the Buffer feed for the day, share some really good content, and then we'll take over um, their feed as well and create some of our own content on um, their channel. So yeah, I think takeovers are a really good way to expose yourself to new audiences whilst also giving some great unique content to your own um, channel. The we'll cover um, is Instagram Zoom. And um, Instagram users can now pinch photos and videos to zoom in and take a closer look at the content on their screen. Um, and this feature rolled out to iPhone users last week. And I think it's still in production for Android and should be out in the next week or so if it's not already out. Um, so here's an example of Instagram Zoom in action. Um, Zoom kind of allows us to get a little bit more creative with content and also makes posts feel interactive. Like instead of just scrolling and liking, you can actually pinch and zoom in and look at some of the um, detail in the photos. And I think some content will naturally entice users to Zoom, um, like you know beautiful beach scenes or any travel photos could instantly make you want to zoom in and have a look in greater detail. But I think in most cases, you'll need to give users a reason to zoom and kind of get a bit closer to your, your content on Instagram. And this example from FedEx is really cool. Um, it shows a shot out of a FedEx plane window of another plane. And um, you might be able to see, but in the caption, they encourage users to zoom out for or zoom in for the best view. And Here's another example from uh, Primark, who are a big clothing store. And what they done was posted some products from their latest catalog, um, new products that are coming out in store, and encouraged users to zoom in and take a closer look at what they were selling and their new products. So I think that's a really great creative use. It gives you a reason to stop and to zoom in. And um, yeah, now I'd love to kind of share a few best practices for using Zoom. Um, I think the first point would be to use it sparingly. Like I think new features can sometimes be overused. And if they're overused, they kind of lose their appeal. So I think using Zoom sparingly, um, just kind of occasionally, is a really good way to make it feel special when you do have a an image that you'd like your followers to zoom in on. Um, I think, again, it's important to give followers a reason to Zoom. Um, so when it comes to planning the types of content, think about the why behind it. Like, why will a user want to Zoom? How can we entice them to, to stop in their feed and to really spend a couple of seconds on our content? Um, so, you know, the examples um, of Primark, that's a, a really great use to make you stop. And there's a reason there to Zoom, take a closer look at products as well. Um, I've seen other brands have used like scavenger hunts and like hidden messages somewhere within the photos. And I think those are really great ways as well to give users a reason to want to zoom in on your photo. And the third one I think is um, really important. Um, I think you should always try and stay on brand and stick with your message and the types of content you want to create no matter what features you're using. And I think sometimes jumping on the latest trends can take away from that. Um, you know, the FedEx example, I think, is um, really great for this because FedEx's whole Instagram feed shows them taking your parcels from A to B and kind of the journey they go on through, you know, delivery vans, through planes, through boats, through, you know, from the moment it's sent to the moment it arrives. And the photo they shared and encouraged to zoom on was a part of that as well. It showed a plane probably about to take off and deliver some parcels. Um, so yeah, I think um, that was really on brand. Whereas for FedEx to just kind of chuck in a scavenger hunt and say like, you know, can you find the hidden message in this post may not have felt um, truly on brand. So yeah, that's a, another really important um, thing there to keep in mind. So now I'd love to talk a little about um, something that we think is incredibly important on Instagram and probably any other social network, um, and that is consistency. So a study by Union Metrics found that most brands 
post to Instagram daily, and the average was actually 1.5 posts per day. Um, but what's even more interesting is the study that found the or the study found that there was no correlation between increased frequency and lower engagement, meaning that if you post two or three times per day, or if brands were posting two or three times per day, they weren't seeing a distinct drop in engagement or any ill effects from that posting. So I think that really says that there's opportunity on Instagram to really be consistent and post daily, you know, at least once per day um, on the channel. And yeah, the, the key takeaway there is, you know, post often, um, I think the most successful brands on Instagram are the ones who get in a regular flow um, and have their own unique style. So you know that there's gonna be a post from say, we work today and it's gonna feature some people at one of their co-working spaces or take you behind the scenes at one of their co-working spaces. And I think that's really key to success. Um, consistency and publishing frequency can really help your audience learn um, when to expect new content from you and also what type of content to expect. And keeping a consistent schedule means that you can maximize engagement without hitting any lulls or um, stretches without updates. You know, sporadic updates once every week or every other week or whenever it feels like you have something to say on Instagram probably won't get too much engagement, especially now with Instagram's algorithm. So you know, we're now more likely to see content from the accounts that we engage with the most. And I think that makes it extremely important to be consistent on Instagram, um, because if your posts consistently get engagement, then you will consistently appear at the top of the feeds. Um, whereas if you only post every now and then, um, it's less likely that you'll get seen and you'll probably see lower engagement on your content. So how we stay consistent um, is using Buffer for Instagram. So the Instagram API doesn't quite allow scheduling just yet, um, but what we do instead is we schedule reminders through Buffer to post content every day. Um, so what we'll do is compose a post within the Buffer mobile app or within our Buffer dashboards. And then we will receive a push notification at the time we scheduled that to go out. So for example, if I had a post to go out at four o'clock this afternoon, a push notification would come through to my phone at four o'clock. I could then open that push notification and go to Instagram and Buffer will preload the photo and copy the caption into my clipboard. So I can just paste that in and then do any enhancements within Instagram. So if there's any filters I wanna use, or maybe I wanna use some um, geotagging and tag the location, then I can do that. And then I will um, share it through Instagram. And um, yeah, I think that's just a really, really good workflow for us and really helps us to make sure that we're consistent. We don't often miss days of posting and it makes us conscious to also have a stream of great content ready to go at any time. Um, so yeah, huge, huge thank you for tuning in. Um, really, really appreciate you being here and hope that this webinar has covered Instagram marketing and, and a little bit of detail for you and hopefully giving you some really full takeaways and some some actionable stuff that you can put into your Instagram marketing strategy. Um, also, just wanted to flag that um, we've been creating some really cool Instagram stuff um, over at the blog recently. And um, this post, for example, Instagram marketing will kind of guide you through from start to kind of finish on creating an Instagram strategy and finding your style. Um, and we also have some more posts on Instagram stories uh, Instagram Zoom and some examples on how brands are using those too. Um, so yeah, really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. And if there are any questions, um, there's my personal um, handle there on Twitter and also at Buffer. Um, I think feel free to to tweet us there and we'll be happy to, to answer anything for you throughout the rest of the day. So um, thank you so much. And um, yeah, please, please get in touch if we can help any further.